So the metal working stage is all completed on your car and you get ready to move into body filler. Take care of all those little blemishes that just don't come out when doing the metal work. It happens. Any you guys watch those car shows where they actually will take body filler and cover the entire thing front to back. Yeah, it happens. I don't like doing that. We're going to try not to try to get the metal dialed in as best we can. But we still, no matter what, going to need a little bit of one of these. And you say there's a lot of choices there. What do I do? Many different kinds of brands, of course, but there's also different types of filler. This here is a fiberglass reinforced filler. This here is for SMC and fiberglass, kind of for Corvette repairs, but there's places on these old cars. All metal, I use that in place of lead, like in areas where, you know, where you remove the lead in a body seam. Well, that's what I used as a reinforcement. Now, the fiberglass resin, that's a little secret here for using on maybe these two components, but this is your regular standard, basically, body filler you see all the time. People refer to it as Bondo. And this is a glazed coat. It kind of takes care of the last little imperfection, but this stuff is spendy. But there's something you can do with this to make it work just about like that for a whole lot less. So if you got questions on when and where and how to use these, stay tuned. Well, let's start off. If you're just doing basic body work on a car where you haven't done extreme amount of metal work, hanging quarters, patching fenders, or modifying door edges, you could probably get away with just these two products here, or actually probably just this one and a little bit of fiberglass resin. Let me explain there, because here's what your most your body filler body shops is all you're ever going to really need, because you're only taking care of small blemishes or just minor imperfections. Now, you typically use this first, take care of all your major you know, dings or distortions or any problems that you couldn't work out in the metal working stage and get that sanded smooth. But there'll be imperfections in this, like little pin holes sand scratches or things that just don't look quite right and this stuff goes on well but it's a little lumpy or how, how to say it just doesn't flow as well that's why they come with this product here it actually comes out this is like the consistency of like thick peanut butter this here well i'm not quite sure how you describe it. maybe ketchup or mustard but <laughs> it flows out a lot easier and you can actually almost actually brush on that you can use that in a very thin coat to fill in those little imperfections well you can actually use fiberglass resin trust me on this small quantities like maybe a 10 percent ratio and mix it with your regular body filler and it'll turn it into about this stuff right here same consistency all the air works itself right out and it spreads very smooth um, but like i said this here is what you would say your basic work now if you're going to get into like we've done here on project mocking where we hung quarter panels we had to remove that lead seam out of the back to get that quarter panel installed that's where this all metal stuff comes into play it's a uh, um, I, I just highly like using it in place of lead. I haven't really mastered the lead working skill uh, doing that stuff yet, but this stuff, pretty thick. I mean, you put your stir stick in here and it kind of stays where it's at. I, I barely just put that in, what, about an inch and a half, two inches there. Um, so it, it's, it's pretty thick. It sands pretty easily for the most part, so I like using it. And it's easier to work with than lead, in my opinion. I've not had any problem with shrinkage or anything at this point. Um, but again, I don't think I put it on super thick, but... The areas of lead seams is where I like to use that. Now we still have your Duraglass filler, which is a fiberglass reinforced filler. This stuff is clumpy, lumpy, and chunky. Um, it serves its purposes. It is water resistant. So if you got an area that you want to sculpt or make hold up, that's probably the product. I like using Duraglass um, on like these side scoops here. They are actually fiberglass side scoops on these cars. So I like to basically keep the same material. So fiberglass resin, fiberglass refiller, same as these hood inserts. They're just painted black and pretty, but I assure you these ones are actually the fiberglass ones. They make a rubbery form one. Um, I don't like those ones. I can't do the body work on them as well. They just they flex too much. I like the fiberglass hood inserts and side scoops. This is the place when, if I got to take care of any kind of areas that need some addressing, like, oh, let's see, we got some like air pockets like this in it. I would use that fiberglass filler to fill that in. Like if it was on the top side that was visible, but we'll see. I'll stay on these a little bit and see how they look, but they don't need a little bit of sculpting because they are fiberglass. So everything you buy that says fiberglass, you know, needs excessive body work. Even our rear spoiler on the other hand, well, this is stuff's a little spendy. It is fantastic stuff. It works great. You can use it as filler or a bonding agent to glue things back together. Well, this spoiler was secondhand. It has issues. It's got a deep crack in it. Uh, I'm going to end up cutting this crack open and probably using this stuff in here to fill in that void and then working it like a regular body filler. Um, like I said, he got this spoiler pretty cheap. Well, this is why. Uh, but it, it needs some doctoring. This is the case here. I'll probably use this stuff here. Again, this stuff's a little spendy, so don't, 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 don't sculpt the whole crowd of this. You'll go broke. So that kind of covers all the different types. And then what we'll do is like, um, the other areas I use the all metal. Let's say here where... 
I patched the fender here. If there's any little imperfections, you see a little bit of height difference. I'm just not perfect, but I'll probably use a little bit of that. And you can see this is bare metal still. Um, I have no objection putting these products, any of them actually on bare metal. There comes that question. Do you put primer underneath or bare steel? The answer is either way, your preference. I probably the majority of the time have like my epoxy primer on everything. And then I put my body filler on top, but there's times like this down here in that fender, I'll go ahead and put a skim coat of that on, rough it in, and then I'll epoxy coat the entire fender and seal it up and not worry about it too much. But for the majority of the time though, once I've got my fender sealed up, I'm only using these products over and they will bond fine as long as your surface is clean and prepped properly. You can put body filler over top of primer, epoxy primer that is. Now this EDP coating here, um, it serves a purpose for shipping and maybe inside panels, like the inside of the door, I probably won't strip down, but anything on the outside, I would recommend removing any of that EDP coating. That's that black primer that comes on the panels when they're new. Like I said, it does a good job for shipping and storing, but I just have had some problems with bonding. I have found rust underneath that stuff, and I just don't trust it to hold up. Now, if it was your you know, daily driver or something like that, scuff and shoot probably be just fine, but something like this here, I, I, I really feel it's probably best to go ahead and remove all that EDP coating before doing any body working or anything at all. So now we'll get into the stuff to make this thing turn from liquid peanut butter or goo into something you can work with in sand. You have two, two different types of hardeners or reactions here. You have a liquid version, which is literally liquid, or you have this stuff here is kind of a paste. Um, they used to make red. I missed the red because I used to mix this because I could tell what layer I was on. You, know, you can mix the red and the blue, make purple putty or red and make kind of a pinkish color. The blue, well, it's just blue. I kind of missed the red, but still works on the same premise. You can use the liquid hardener in any of these and it'll actually work okay. Some think people feel that it actually sands easier if you use the liquid hardener. Um, the problem I have with liquid hardeners, I can't tell when it's mixed. The blue has a bit of a dye, so you can tell when you've mixed it thoroughly because you won't have any blue streaks and it's all an even color. So that's just something I guess to say my two cents, but for the most part, it's pretty much interchangeable, all this stuff. I know the liquid hardener comes with all metal, um, but you can use the cream hardener in it, but I typically use what it came with. I don't, it's just something about my brain is wired. I, I like this because this would have came with this one, this came with that, and so on. Uh, but as for the hardeners go, you can mix them, but there's also a mix ratio. You don't want to put too much hardener. This stuff will set up so fast and sometimes so hard it won't sand worth a crap. So always follow the mixing instructions on your product or very close to it. You'll get the best results for sanding and how it's supposed to work and then work time before it sets up to a brick. So now we have covered the different flavors and kind of where they're used at on the car and when to use them and which ones you probably may not need at all kind of thing, but just kind of give you an overview of the different types of products, the different things you can use to get the best results possible. And in the end, after everything that I've shared, it's going to come down to personal preference. You may try different brands and you find that it works better, or you may find that uh, you like using one of the different harness. I would suggest as of everything on building these cars, experiment, practice, and try. I just wanted to kind of give you an overview of the different kinds of products and how they could be used in areas that I like to use them in for and I've gotten some really good results. And the other thing someone I've always said, you know, you can sculpt the car out of Bondo and it'll last for quite a while or it completely falls apart. I built a 1964 Corvair about 25 years ago. I won't tell you how many gallons of that stuff we used, but we started doing the body work on it. All we found was like big old brass or abrased seams all over the side of that car. It was every bit of an inch, inch and a half thick. It wasn't worth trying to salvage that car and put all the metal in. At that time, it wasn't available, one. And two, it was just, it wasn't worth that much time trying to create new panels. So we literally sculpted the car out of Duraglass and sanded it straight, looks great. And even the last time I saw this car about three years ago, it is still holding up very well, but it doesn't see the weather like your normal daily driver. So now with that news, now you know you can sculpt the crowd of one of these buckets right here. Now I wouldn't suggest doing that, but it happens. Those cars get sculpted out of this stuff, go across the auction block, they look beautiful, and sadly enough, they actually hold up for quite a while. Not that I recommend doing that. I don't think that's something I put on my bucket list to do again to load a car full of putty, 
But we're going to do a little bit of filler work here, and that will be the next videos here, doing some of the all metal maybe down on that there, patching up the door, stripping the EDP, and kind of the steps of building a good foundation for a durable finish, or at least what has worked for me. And like I said, this body working stuff and painting, there are so many opinions on that. This is just mine. This is my what I've had, the results, the products that I've used. And I would still suggest that you buy some of your own stuff here, maybe smaller quantities, not the big gallon stuff, and work with it. Try the different hardeners, mix it differently. Um, try mixing some of the fiberglass resin with it, see if you like it that better. You could even mix the glaze coat and the regular body filler, get some kind of stuff in between if you need to for different viscosity to stick to different panels. That is totally acceptable. I've seen it done and I've even done it myself. So anyway, that's going to wrap up the quick overview on how to do some body working or what products to use. I got something I want to touch base on here, this tilt steering column. It was in a box that came with this project car. It wasn't installed in the car, but it came with it. And it's a nice tilt column for first gen F body, not bodies, but F body. Meaning it's for a Camaro, I feel. I don't think it's for a fiber. I went to the trouble of sanding it, painting it, got it all ready to put it in the car. I want to mount the ignition switch. doesn't work. doesn't line up. Do a little more homework on it. That's a Camaro-style linkage. Well, crap. So I believe that'll work on Camaro and Nova. Anybody interested in a nice tilt column for a first-gen F-Body or Nova, let me know in the comments down here. make you a good deal on that thing because I don't feel I'll be using it anytime soon. I've got plenty of birds to build yet, and I don't think that's going to happen for me. But if someone would like to have a tilt column, yeah, I'll send you some pictures of it and work out that way. So... Anyway, I will definitely grab the camera. We're going to do, start doing some of the body work. Thank you for watching. Thank you for sharing. Appreciate you following me on the journey of the Mockingbird. And we'll catch you guys next time.